Many of the questions I'm asked relate to the problems associated with fitting the New Zealand sports horse, particularly um, with regard to jumping and general purpose saddles. The predominance of the Clyde thoroughbred blood in the conformation of these horses leaves saddle manufacturers and saddle fitters alike with some quite extreme challenges. My brief this morning is to find a jumping saddle to fit a typical New Zealand sport horse. Our young jockey, uh, Jessica Woods, has enviably long legs and we shall need to find a really forward cut saddle. The first thing that we'll try and do is take a meaningful measurement of the horse's back to aid our saddle fitter or the person that we're asking to send us some saddles. First of all, just let me tell you about this flexi rule. It's a perfectly standard flexi rule which you can buy in most art shops. This one is 60 centimetres long and you really can't be doing with the shorter one. It doesn't give a good enough picture of enough of the horse. So I'll take the measure away. I've divided it in half. That's the middle point. And from there, each of these sections, just marked it with a a marker pen is nine centimetres. Nine centimetres, 18 centimetres, no need to do a third one, and the same both sides. You take the wither temper behind the shoulder, about here, not here. This is what the saddler needs to know, there. And I'm going to ask Jess to pick up the front leg and move it forward so you can see just how far when the horse is extending that shoulder comes back. Look, it's right back here. So the saddle, the points of the saddle, the saddle can sit further forward here, but the points of the saddle, the bones of the saddle, the tree, the skeleton if you will, must not sit further forward than that. If you haven't got a breastplate, the horse will push it back there, almost certainly anyway. Right. So we're talking first of all about the wither temper. This is the one that people always send me. Of course, there's more than one dimension to consider when we do this. This has to be taken, as I say, three ladies' fingers, three small fingers, two inches behind the back of this quite loaded shoulder, quite wide scapula in, the, in, in this horse. And then we transpose this to this piece of paper. putting in our points of reference as we go. At A, we measure across there. At B, we measure across there. That gives us a meaningful measurement. The way to find this is to trace the last rib, the 18th thoracic vertebrae, up into the spine. So we will mark that here. We mustn't take any weight further back than that. That is the, sometimes the cantle can sit like that, but the weight must not come further back than that, which is the last vertebrae. Now, the relationship between this curve and that curve is quite crucial. And this is not rocket science, but it does tell us something. This is the curve. I put this actually following the line of the horse's spine through here and this horse is typically New Zealand inclined to be butt high shall we call it. I'm looking for a parallel line between this first marker here to this point here on the 18th thoracic vertebrae. Now averagely I can have probably that much drop. This horse is much less and again typical of the Clyde thoroughbred cross which has most of its engine if you like, behind the saddle. So we're looking, a parallel line with one finger is not quite there, two fingers is almost too much, so it's about one and a half fingers. This is not rocket science, but it does tell us something. It tells us that the horse will wear the saddle more on this front third here, because that's the way the rider, anyway, is gonna be pushed. This is where the stirrup bar is, here, and when the rider is on that stirrup bar, all that weight, particularly in two point, this is where the lion's share of the weight will go. So we have to do as much as we can supporting this area here to keep the weight back on these muscles. 
This line follows the curve of the horse's back as we measured it. That denotes the 18th thoracic vertebrae. And that, a finger and a half, is the drop quite shallow. Two and a half is more, is, is, more, is, is, is sort of average. And quite often on some of the big warm bloods, you can have four fingers or more like this. The back will be down here. 